hour or 50 hours a week are twice more likely to get divorced. So work also affected our relationship. And overwork, of course, can cause some you know, risk that is uh, having a divorce. This is the commute hours in, in Malaysia, Jakarta, in the capital. The commute hours there is 400 hours a year. I'm not sure about uh, Danang, maybe it's probably like less traffic uh, But a lot of people also spend a lot of time even to go to work uh, before going to actually do the work. Uh, and there is this term uh, in Japanese, I don't know if you've heard about this, it's karoshi. It means dropping dead at your desk. Uh, there's about 10,000 karoshi uh, cases in Japan. Um, and this is also sad because if like, you do your work and uh, it affects your relationship, uh, you actually spend a lot of hours on the road. And it also can result in that as well. And according to Reuters, workers take an average of 57% uh, of their allocated vacation time. So even though you work a lot and it affects everything in your life neg negatively, uh, you still only spend about 57 hours of your allocated vacation time. And 80% of people actually are dissatisfied with their job. So you can imagine only the first row here are actually satisfied and a lot of you are not. So that's actually a really sad, depressing statistics about work. Uh, but here at Kubu, the, our working space, we're trying to make a difference. And I think other working spaces here as well in Vietnam are also trying to do this uh, change. Um, because the office is broken. So this is basically our hub in Bali. Uh, you know, imagine yourself going into the bamboo hut or you are bare feet and you hear like 80 different languages being spoken where you can learn every day from each other and to collaborate uh, with each other. So our working space, we have about 8,000 members uh, from 85 countries. That is the total number of members that already come in from the last five years. Uh, where we hold about 445 events in 2017. Uh, like I said, about 1,500 since we opened. Uh, and we've been named by all these um, uh, publications, like Forbes named us as the top 10 working spaces on Earth, and also CNBC as one of the world's best working spaces. So the hub where we're in, it's more like a classroom than an office, and that gives like a friendly feeling for everyone to come in, to, to get to know the rest, uh, the people there, the members, and actually give themselves and grow and be happier. Uh, this is just some of the photos that is happening there. You know, there's a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of events, and you're sitting next to the rice field. Um, so basically, it's it's changing the work, how we work, uh, and um, and especially because of the working space. Working spaces are trying to change that uh, way of uh, us uh, working. Um, so let me just tell you a bit about worker, about us. According to statistics as well, there's a lot of statistics uh, that I have here. 48% of us will be freelancers by 2020. Sorry, not us, it's actually US citizens, so it doesn't affect the Asian one. But the US citizens are actually, 40% uh, are going to be freelancers by 2020. And millennials will change jobs 50 to 20 times in their lives. Millennials are a bit different, yeah, period. They are motivated by money. And I just had a talk as well during lunch about this. I'm a millennial myself, and I think my drive about work is, nowadays is a bit changing as well. Um, so for me, um, this is the Maslow uh, hierarchy. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Previously, the needs of people are, you know, psychological needs, uh, hunger and thirst. Um, that's what comes first. But for us millennials, now it changed. self actualization is what important. Esteem needs, social needs, is what drives us to work, to do what we love. So, meet the new nomad. If this is basically the characteristic of the people who are coming to our hub, uh, and what we believe as the future profile of the workers. They are, um, they are a risk taker, uh, they are inspired by movement, they are uh, they prefer experiences of her possessions. So you see nowadays 
a lot of young people also go traveling after their school because they would like to get experiences first before actually going to work and get, you know, buy houses and all this kind of stuff. And you see a lot of things happening as well um, out there. So just some of the profile of the members that we have to give you an idea. This guy, Ben, is 23. He actually came to Bali on the same day as me. So he's really close, close friends with me. Uh, he owned a company called Wonder Bracelets, where he made about $10,000 million in sales in 2016. And he currently has more than 40 uh, employees in the US. Uh, his motivation is productive, feel good, and to end. And when he came to Hubo, he's also a bit like a quirky kind of guy. Uh, like he, he draws stuff on the table while everybody's on the laptop. And now he's making like, million dollars company um, and we we asked him like we, he actually used the opportunity as well to go to our think tank session and all this kind of stuff where he met the people and then give him a, uh, give him an idea and then now he created this company uh, we also have mary she's a mother of five funny thing is as well it's related because she's my neighbor and mary she um owns um company um e-commerce company uh, where she's actually self-taught, so she never went to the university. Uh, and she traveled around the world with her five kids and then do it uh, and be based in Bali as well. Um, and there's also this guy called Ricky, and Ricky actually owns a bank. He created a bank uh, in London, uh, which is now just got uh, purchased by Harrods. Um, but he actually was based in Bali as well a couple of years ago. Uh, he only wore this tank and then he Whenever he has a meeting, he put on his shirt and then do a um, online meeting. Uh, and it's possible as well to actually do it from everywhere. Um, so yeah, his daily motivation is a band that doesn't suck. Um, and this three profile is basically the idea of not only millennials but like the future workers, where they can be everywhere. They can be mothers. Uh, they can also be young people who are like, still lost in their life, you know, or a guy who's already have a lot of experience in banking and create something. There's a lot of numbers here, but basically this gives you an idea as well about, um, you know, like the future workers. Um, the 95% of the future workers believe that work-life balance is important, and 70% actually says that it's very important for them. Um, and they, 71 percent of the millennials they expect to do an overseas assignment, travel during their career, and this is also one of the reasons why I'm here as well because there's an opportunity to travel. Um, 62 percent believe that they can make a difference, and that's an important key as well. Uh, the kids nowadays they not kids, but in us we we want to search for like a job that that create a difference, not only just something that is static. Um, and 93% see an ongoing skill development as an important part of their future careers. So also about work, there's a lot of companies now that are interested in this way of work. Um, most of these companies actually, um, they already put money in the working spaces and actually put as well their employees in the working spaces because uh, they believe that these coaching spaces can help their companies to be more productive, to be happier, and it's also proven that you can also have a lot of um, uh, interaction with others and learn from each other. And this is basically about our life. Um, from the age of 6 to 22, we learn. We go to school, from kindergarten to university, sometimes even longer to take PhD maybe and then from the age of 22 most of us we go to work and we live until the age of 65 or maybe 60 it really depends on the country and then you retire and then finally we will be able to live if you make you know if you make it if you can actually stay that long to enjoy life and nowadays what we do at the working spaces and other you know partners uh, out there is it conferred all these things so you can live, work, and learn at the same time. Uh, and yeah, just a little bit of message about the education system. You know, like our education system is like this, like everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish to, by the ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And that's why at, at the hub we give a lot of learning events 
for any kind of topic because we believe that everybody can excel in their own interest. So some of the learning that we have and who would and yeah, so that's basically what we're doing in changing the way we live and work and learn and hopefully the statistics and my talk inspired you as well to be happier. Uh, is there any Q&A or am I going too fast? I'm going really fast, am I? <laughs> um, we have like a bit, uh, three minutes of Q&A if, if the audience uh, have any questions about new life, uh, new lifestyle. Then we have time for two, two questions if you want. Có ai có câu hỏi gì mà à, mình còn một ít thời gian để hỏi khoảng đầu ba ba hai câu hỏi. I think I think no one have and I watch Okay, cool. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us with her.